Hello, are you an MRI technologist seeking MRI knowledge, trying to be better at preventing injuries in the field of MRI? Now, MRI safety is such a great topic to talk about because there's so much to talk about. And there's so many areas that we need to understand in order for us to be effective at preventing injuries or risk to our patient. And SAR is one of these issues that we do worry about. Many times scanning will be sitting there and all of a sudden a pop-up comes on our computer and it says, you've achieved, you exceeded your SAR. And now we have to figure out how we're going to reduce that. Well, we need to know what SAR is. And SAR stands for Specific Absorption Rate. And it describes that energy that's being absorbed and deposited in our patient. And so we measure this using watts, which is an energy per kilogram or tissue mass. And now, there are many different limits based on what RF coils we're using and what guidelines are set forth by the IEC, but SAR is a parameter that is provided for every six minutes of scanning. So it's an average of energy deposition over six minutes. And there's many things we can do from a parameter standpoint to reduce that risk. For example, increasing our TR or decreasing our flip angle or maybe utilizing a soft RF pulse or a longer duration RF pulse. Again, other parameters like uh, parallel imaging and, and other things can also help reduce our SAR as well. But SAR is for essentially a given sequence. So if we say do not exceed a specific SAR limit, that's for that axial T1 or that coronal T2. Now we also have something called specific energy dose or SED, SED. And now SED is something that describes the overall dose of energy we're giving to our patient. So how much energy have we to given to our patient for a total time they've been in the scanner? So it's the uh, it's basically adding up all the SARS that we've provided for each given sequence and giving a final readout of how much energy was given to our patient. And we measure this in joules, which is an energy per kilogram, again, mass. And so there used to be specific IEC regulations on what these limits were, but many manufacturers still have set limits that if you were to exceed a set on a specific patient, you could potentially lock yourself out from scanning that individual patient for 24 hours. So that means if you're scanning your patient and doing a, a full spine and a brain and an abdomen, and all of a sudden you reach your said limit, the system itself could say, hey, 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 stop we don't want you to scan anymore. You've given too much energy to your patient and you now you can't scan this patient for 24 hours. And that could be a, obviously a problem when trying to stay on schedule or trying to make sure you get as many patients done as you possibly can. And so SAR and SED kind of work together. SAR is the component that describes the individual sequence, the amount of energy we're giving to a patient over a duration of time, which is an average over six minutes. And SED is the accumulated energy that we've given to our patient for a given exam. So I hope this was very helpful in understanding at least one of these components of MR safety. And if you need more information, please visit writeadvantage.com. That's R-I-T-E, advantage.com. And you get a full scope of education in the world of MR safety, the most comprehensive education you can get in terms of MR safety for a technologist. Again, thank you for listening.